everyone. I'm Attorney Maria Bernadette Basilonia of the Enforcement and Investor Protection Department of the Securities and Exchange Commission. Welcome to our webinar on when and where to invest, brought to you by the SEC together with our partners from the SEC Campaign Network. Bahagi ang webinar na ito ng ating celebration ng World Investor Week 2022 na pinangungunahan ng International Organization of Securities Commissions, or IOSCO. The IOSCO organizes the World Investor Week to raise awareness of the importance of investor education and protection. The SEC, together with the Philippine Stock Exchange and the other exchanges around the world, opened the IOSCO World Investor Week last October 5 with the ringing of the bell for financial literacy. This year, the campaign aptly revolves around investor resilience and sustainable finance in recognition of the challenges investors had to face during the global pandemic. At para sa ating mga kababayang wala pang investment, maaari itong magsilbing sign para magsimula ng magtabi ng emergency funds, mag-ipon, at saka mag-invest. Pero gaya ng lagi naming paalala dito sa SEC, huwag magpadalos-dalos. Pag-aralan, suriin, at kilatisin munang mabuti ang mga papasuking investment. Dahil kung hindi, baka tayo ay ma-fall sa maling investment. Mahirap na, baka ma-scam, di ba? Kaya naman ngayong araw, aalamin natin ang mga lehitimong investment options na maaari nating pasukan. Nang sa gayon ay wala nang mabiktima ng scams at bogus investments. Now more than ever, we recognize the importance of investing in sound and legitimate investment products to protect and grow our hard-earned money as we strive to be resilient in these challenging times. Join us in this two-part webinar and listen to what our esteemed financial experts have to say about how to kickstart your investment journey. Ngayong araw, nag tayo ng mga eksperto mula sa Bureau of Treasury, Investigrams, at Citicor Energy Rate Corp. Bukas naman ay sasamahan tayo ng ating mga opisyal mula sa Banko Sentral ng Pilipinas para talakayin kung paano tayo makakapagtabi ng mas malaking halaga para sa ating retirement sa pamamagitan ng Personal Equity and Retirement Accounts o PERA. Sasamahan din tayo ng Pag-ibig Fund para naman magabayan tayo sa pagbuno ng mas malaking savings sa pamamagitan ng kanilang MP2 savings. Pero paalala lang din po namin na ang SEC ay hindi hayagang ini-endorse ang mga kumpanyang makakasama natin sa webinar at lalong hindi ginagarantiya ng SEC ang kanilang mga produkto. Layunin lamang po namin na bibigyan kayo ng konkretong halimbawa at pagkakaunawa sa kung paano makakapag-invest sa stocks, sa bonds, sa collective investment schemes at sa iba pang investment. To start today's program, let us hear the opening remarks from the SEC Commissioner, Kelvin Lester K. Lee. To our highly esteemed guest resource persons, Mr. Martin Maloney, Secretary General of the International Organization of Securities Commissions, the IOSCO, to Dr. Felipe Medalla, Governor of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, to Mr. Eduardo G. Marino, Deputy Treasurer, Bureau of Treasury, to Ms. Marilyn Acosta, Chief Executive Officer, Pag-ibig Fund. To Ms. Salve Duplito, Founder and President of the Empower and Transform OPC. To Mr. Chinky Tan, Entrepreneur and Motivational Speaker. To Mr. John Christian Bisnar, Co-Founder and CEO of Investagrams. To Mr. Edgar Saavedra, Chairman of Citicor Energy REIT Corporation. And to Mr. Oliver Tan, President and Chief Executive Officer of Citicor Energy REIT Corporation. To our SEC campaign, network partners, and valued stakeholders participating in this webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant day to all of you. The Securities and Exchange Commission progressively pursues investor protection through our strategic initiative, the SEC CAN, which we launched in August of 2020. Now in its third year of implementation, we're delighted to share with you that the SEC CAN and the overarching investor education program of the Commission called the SEC Capital Market Promotion and Awareness Interagency Network, or the SEC Campaign Network, has significantly advanced. 
From only 11 partners in 2020, the SEC Campaign Network has now grown into a 65-strong network of government agencies and private organizations, both at the national and local levels. Working hand-in-hand -hand as partners for the education and protection on investing Filipinos here and abroad. The growth of the SEC Campaign Network yielded a multiplier effect on our investor education campaign, which exponentially expanded on the social media with a current total reach of 3.3 million. This year, the Commission once again joins the International Organization of Securities Commissions, or IOSCO, in celebrating the World Investor Week, which is a global campaign to raise awareness about the importance of investor education and protection that highlights the various initiatives of securities regulators in these two critical areas. In line with the World Investor Week celebration, this two-part webinar entitled When and Where to Invest aims to raise awareness on alternative investment opportunities available to the public and the factors to consider prior to investing. Part one, scheduled today, October 13, will focus on equities and bonds, while part two, scheduled tomorrow, October 14, will focus on collective investment schemes. We thank in advance the subject matter experts who have agreed to be our guest resource persons and to share their knowledge and insights on these investment opportunities. Likewise, we thank our highly regarded moderators, Ma'am Salve Duplito and Mr. Chinky Tan, who will further keep the discussion substantive and lively and funny, I hope. We are confident that this webinar, along with its powerhouse roster of speakers, will enable you to start securing your financial future through the alternative investment schemes that will be presented and discussed. We also encourage you to take part in the succeeding activities we have lined up for the month-long celebration of the World Investor Week, which will culminate on Investor Protection Week in the first week of November. Please follow our official social media accounts for further information. And with that, thank you and mabuhay. Thank you, Kong Lee. Before we introduce our speakers, Shout out muna sa lahat ng viewers natin on Facebook. Share this with your friends, family, and loved ones upang sabay-sabay tayong matuto ng wastong pag-invest. We'd also love to know when or where you're joining us for today's webinar. Let us know in the comments down below. Pakibigyan lamang po ng permiso ang StreamYard na makita ang inyong pangalan sa Facebook para naman ma-acknowledge namin kayo kung sakaling may mga komento at mga tanong kayo. I would like to greet our viewers from Dasmarinas, Cavite, Ormoc City, Leyte, Calapan, Oriental Mindoro, Laguna, Pasig City, and students from University of Caloocan City South Campus, PUP Santa Mesa, Manila, University of St. Louis, Tuigarao, Notre Dame of Mid Midsayap College. Hello po sa inyong lahat. We'd also like to acknowledge our students from Christine of Mandarian Aura College, SVMA. Hello sa inyong lahat and thank you so much for watching. Please also don't forget to like and follow our Facebook page para updated kayo sa aming mga webinar, investor alerts at announcements. We are also on Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok. I-download din ang Sec Check app sa Google Play Store at Apple App Store. More importantly, visit our website at www.sec.gov.ph which contains all our announcements and updates for the public. In the meantime, stay with us here on Facebook as we tell you the basics of when and where to invest. We have a stellar lineup of speakers for today. First up is Mr. Eduardo Anthony G. Marino III, Acting Deputy Treasurer of the Bureau of Treasury. Mr. Marino supervises the asset management, accounting, and research operations of the Treasury. Prior to this, he was the director of the Asset Management Service, overseeing the cash and investment management operations of the Bureau. He also served as the Division Chief of the Bureau's Fund Management Division for nearly five years from 2014 to 2019. This division is the trading arm of the Bureau tasked with the managing of investable funds of the Philippine National Government. Prior to his stint in the Treasury, he was a planning officer in the Department of Finance from 2010 to 2013. Mr. Marino earned his Master's of Arts in Public Policy International Program from the University of Tokyo's Graduate School of Public Policy. 
Ladies and gentlemen, our first speaker, Mr. Mourinho. Good afternoon, everyone, to our fellow Filipinos and, of course, potential investors of the uh, for our government securities. The this afternoon, I will be presenting. Uh, the title of my presentation is Bonds 101, Investing in Government Securities, an Investment in Our Collective Future. By the end of this uh, presentation, I hope I would be able to uh, help you understand all, uh, all of these uh, words that uh, you see here in this slide. So to begin, uh, I guess the first question is what are government securities? And there are two sides, I think two ways of looking at it. For the government, it is utang. Uh, to be the short and sweet of it is that government securities are debt obligation of the national government, the Republic of the Philippines, to investors, to you, our, uh, our Filipino investors. Uh, it is the proceeds of such uh, government securities, yung utang namin, is used to fund uh, the budget for the social services, for the roads and bridges, as well as any hospitals, and of course, for debt repayments uh, that will fall due. But for the investors, uh, government securities usually are form the fixed income part of your investment portfolio. Because ito pong government securities ay utang ng Republika uh, for many investors. And for the here in the Philippines, ito po ay treated as virtually risk-free. This is the safest uh, investment outlet you can find here in the Philippines. Uh, in terms of uh, variety, we have a lot. So in terms of currency, meron po tayo sa Philippine Peso, meron po tayo US Dollar. Recently, we have uh, expanded to Chinese Yuan. We are always, of course, have Japanese Yen and Euro-denominated bonds. Also in tenor, from 91 days to as far as 25 years, and also the listing location. The bulk of our utang of government securities are, of course, due to the domestic, but we have substantial uh, 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 presence uh, in external or foreign countries, especially for our overseas Filipinos. And of course, in terms of interest rates, we have uh, discounts, fixed coupon rates, and sometimes floating rates. So there, as you can see, there's a lot of variety, a lot of uh, uh, different types of government securities so that you, the, you know, the investor will have the chance to choose the specific investment that you need or uh, that will suit your uh, investment requirements and your own uh, special circumstances. Now, the next few slides will uh, discuss the specific types of these government securities. Now, first up is the treasury bills, or in short, the bills. So treasury bills are the shortest uh, go uh, government securities in terms of maturity. Then usually in the form of 91 days, 182, and 364 days, in short, up to one year. Now, in terms of interest payment, there is, of course, no regular interest payments because of the shortness of the uh, maturity. But the investor compensation comes in the form of a discount. Now, what does that term mean? OK, I think uh, an example will be illustrative here. So let's say, let's say, kailangan po ng Republika umutang mag-issue ng treasury bills, 91-day treasury bills, for 100, 1 million pesos. Uh, when we issue that 1 million peso T-bills, hindi po namin matatanggap yung 1 million pesos na po. So when we give you the treasury bills, we actually receive an amount lower, the stated face amount of 1 million pesos. Let's say 950,000 pesos. So after the end of 91 days, may pangako kaming babayaran kayo ng 1 million in full, even though natanggap lang namin from you, the investor, ay 950,000. So that 50,000 pesos in this case is called the discount. And this is the primary form of a uh, investor return that uh, you will expect to receive. Now, in terms of a uh, minimum investment, unfortunately, it really varies from bank to bank. So it depends. So you need to get in touch with your bank of choice. Uh, I have seen, I have personally seen minimum investment of about 25,000. Sometimes 
50,000 and even more in rarer equations, 250,000 pesos. And this one, if you have by, uh, if you had the chance to secure the treasury bills, uh, it can be sold easily via secondary markets. Now, again, that, uh, that might be an unfamiliar term, secondary markets. Now, I guess the uh, closest analogy here is think of secondary markets similar to sec the market for secondhand goods or products. Ibig sabihin ko lang nito is that if you want to buy treasury bills uh, or, and of course sell them, you need to uh, uh, secure the supply from the banks na uh, bibilhan ninyo either from their from their own uh, from their own uh, from their own uh, uh, inventory or they can uh, they can choose they can uh, find other investors who hold cash bills yun lang po ang ibig sabihin ng, uh, ng secondary markets now, of course, the next type of uh, treasury bonds is what we call T-bonds or FXTNs, fixed, uh, fixed rate uh, treasury notes. In terms of maturity, anything above one year up to 25 years. Uh, interest payment, there is now going to be regular semi-annual interest payments every six months in short. And again, in terms of uh, minimum investment, it varies from bank to bank. The same caveat I have mentioned for bills applies for treasury bonds. And also, like treasury bills, it can be sold through secondary markets. The next type of uh, treasury bonds, the uh, government securities, are uh, special issuances really uh, dedicated to catering to the needs of our retail investors. Retail here means individual investors. So the our flagship uh, securities or the, uh, the bonds for such uh, for those are what we call retail treasury bonds or RTBs. So the uh, retail treasury bonds are special issue ones, as I have mentioned. Uh, ano lang po siya? Uh, uh, they're uh, specific, uh, once or twice a year lang po namin siya in issue. It can be denominated in, uh, mostly denominated in Philippine peso, but uh, recently, we have seen that uh, there's potential for use, use uh, U.S. denominated retail treasury bonds. Again, maturity is every, anything up to 25 years. Although, as we will see later, uh, to maximize the participation of retail individual investors, ay kita po namin na kailangan namin iklian ang maturity. In terms also for interest payments, ito po ay quarterly. Unlike po kanina na treasury bonds, at least kaat yung bills, ang retail treasury bonds po promises to give quarterly coupon uh, payments. Again, to maximize the cash flow na, na matatanggap ng ating retail investors within a specific year. And of course, uh, minimum investment because of, this, uh, of its uh, target audience is a minimum of 5,000 pesos. But note that the, these are only available during the uh, primary issuance or the date of uh, issuance. So again, there's only a specific window when we do what we call a uh, uh, market ano, uh, offer period that uh, investors can buy uh, retail treasury bonds at a minimum of 5,000 pesos. So, we always encourage you to ano, not to monitor lahat ng aming announcements so you may have the chance to ano, to take part in this uh, program of ours also also the we can uh, it can be sold through secondary markets if ever you had the chance to uh, secure these RTBs. Uh, in 2019 and 2020 we had what we call uh, premium bonds uh, these also are also very special issuances it has a maturity of one year, an interest payment uh, of uh, quarterly uh, frequency, and unlike the RTBs, has a minimum investment of 500 pesos. Of course, unlike the other securities, the premium bonds that we had issued uh, in those two years are hold to maturity. And the reason for that is because, as you can see, that's a uh, name, premium, uh, meron pong special quarterly prices na, na pipili through uh, our rock ball. So it, uh, usually po a minimum of 1 million additional pesos 
for uh, the lucky winner every quarter. So kaya po that uh, because of that uh, logistical uh, no constraint, there is a need to hold it to maturity for a period of one year. So these are our special uh, issuances for uh, the retail investors. But lastly, we also, as I have mentioned, we have ROP bonds. We have foreign currency denominated bonds issued abroad in the form of dollars, yen, yuan, and euro. Again, up to 25 years maturity and an annual an interest payment semi-annual payments. For these ROPs, like the treasury bills and the normal treasury bonds, minimum investment will have will vary from bank to bank. And usually, given the dollar, given the foreign uh, uh, nature of these uh, instruments, mas mataas po siya ang minimum investment. And like also, but similar to almost all of the security uh, types of GS I have mentioned, can be sold, can be sold via secondary markets. So, what are so there are a lot of uh, products that I have mentioned, and I would like to summarize uh, the what I think are the commonality across all types of products. So government securities in general is of course risk-free, uh, low risk investment. It is essentially risk-free, credit risk-free. Ibig po sabihin, pag may uh, inisyo kaming five years, 5% uh, uh, government securities, then we promise to pay you, uh, do you, the investor 5% every year, and then we will return back the principal after the end of five, uh, five years. So yun po ang pangako. And this is, of course, the direct obligation of the Republic. Of course, given the, you know, the, uh, with that safety, with that uh, uh, guarantee of the backing of the Republic itself, uh, it still is higher, relatively higher than the time deposits being offered by banks. So that's one of the value proposition of these government securities. And uh, in terms of uh, access, in terms of uh, access, you can use, in fact, encourage you to use your existing uh, current account, savings account as settlement accounts. And recently we have uh, 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 provided online investment channels to make the investment experience much, much easier. Now, the, uh, it, the products dedicated for, of course, retail investors, such as our RTBs and for uh, no, our premium bonds, they are, we can say they are affordable. Again, I have mentioned 5,000 pesos minimum for RTBs, 500 pesos for premium bonds. And I think the critical part is that for a uh, primary issuance, so yung bagong issue, ng RTB or any future uh, new issuance of uh, premium bonds, it is important to note that uh, zero fees po. Uh, we do not charge any brokerage fee, any additional administrative fee para po uh, makapag-invest kayo for those uh, special uh, products. Again, the, all of those uh, government securities promise regular fixed interest payments, whether they are quarterly, or every six months. And that's important for you to properly plan out yung in yung uh, budget, and especially yung in yung uh, cash flow uh, requirements. And the last part I'd like to also emphasize is that the government securities are negotiable and transferable. So if it turns out that uh, you would need money kaagad before the maturity of the government security that you have bought, you can. Uh, uh, call your bank and then ask them to help or order them to sell the holdings you have to generate the cash flow. Of course, once you do that, the everything will have to be subject to prevailing market rates. It can be, it can be that you will be able to sell at a much higher price than what you have bought the GS4, but it can also be uh, on the downside that you are only able to sell at a lower price than you bought it for. So yun po yung, I guess, yung uh, risk lang if you decide to sell at an earlier date than the maturity, uh, stated maturity period. Again, I have mentioned we have the special issuances dedicated for retail uh, investors. So we have the uh, RDBs. We also have the premium bonds, one and two. And more recently, just last August, last September, we have 
issued or launched the RTB28. Uh, the I'd like to okay tapos na po ang RTB28. So but nonetheless I would like to uh, I would like to discuss yung mga specific terms and yung kanyang what we call uh, properties of these RTB28. And the reason for that is because they will more or less any future issuance of uh, RTBs you know, will have more or less the same characteristics. So as I mentioned kanina, up to 25 years yung mga RTBs namin pwede namin issue. But the only way we can get to maximize the you know, retail uh, participation, eh, 5.5 years lang po ang ina-issue namin for RTB 28. And this is pretty much true over the last few years, three to five. So that's where the sweet spot kumbaga, ng mga retail investors. Interest rate, 5.75% uh, annually. Again, that will might change. For future issuance, that might change. That's going to be market determined. Can be higher and be lower. Uh, of course, from the point of view of the government, we hope to be it will be lower. And in terms of the frequency, again, quarterly payments and status, these are direct, unconditional, and subordinated and general obligations of the Republic. All of those uh, fancy terms, fancy words uh, na nabanggit ko are just to assure you na ito po ay uh, uh, pangako ng Republika sa inyo, sa mga, mga investors na bibili ng GS na babayaran po namin ito in time. And ito po, ang um, for RTB28, ito, ito po ang mga banko. You will see here sa issue manager. Siya po, yun po ang mga banko na uh, pwedeng na nag-offer na tumulong sa amin ibenta ang RTB28 and those were the banks where investors could have gotten what we call yung primary issuance, yung 5,000 minimum investment. Again, for future issuances, that might be different. But what will not be different, I believe, will be, the, of course, the continued presence of our government banks, meaning si DBP at si Land Bank. All of the private banks, no, that might change depending sa kanilang performance and sa kanilang uh, 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 the act uh, activities. So those are the uh, characteristics of the RTP. And finally, I guess just a few words on bakit ba pinupursu na namin ng, ng DTR itong RTBs. Now, the benefit for the Republic of the, these uh, RTBs is that it is cost effective. Uh, the interest rate we're getting the, uh, and the administrative cost in, when it comes to issuances are uh, very favorable to the Republic. And more importantly, it allows us to channel savings retail savings to support the rehabilitation from the uh, ravages of the pandemic and of course to facilitate and to help the growth of the economy and the country as a whole and it uh, it, it helps us achieve the overarching goal of the government the national government as a whole to for financial inclusion so the point here is that RTB provides an affordable and convenient uh, no, uh, investment properties for retail investors. The ability to tap uh, the RTBs, these are domestic, these are denominated in the Philippine peso, reduces our reliance on foreign exchange risk and therefore reduces the country's to vulnerability to global economic shocks, no? real global economic shocks that we have uh, seen that has been ravaging the, uh, the economy, global economy over the last few months. And of course, uh, on a broader uh, policy of public policy objective, capital market development. So we want uh, investors to buy and sell, actively buy and sell government securities because first, uh, it makes it easier for us to issue new debt to fund the requirements of the Republic and allows us to have a stronger position uh, whenever we wish to borrow globally, externally, and we can secure more competitive rates and more reasonable terms. And of course, the pop. This is more or less going to be common from future RTBs if you wish to buy, and at the one critical part, new issuance of RTBs to form potential options in you. you will be able to get the 5,000 pesos. You can do that through over the counter. So 
how to visit physically visit any se authorized selling agent but we do have ordering platforms so we have you in some website namin. of course we have land bank is offering one we also have uh, facilities by first metro as well as china capital or if you want to you to invest from the you know uh, from the convenience of your own phone meron din po available for rtbs no uh, app based investment channels of course kay land bank mobile banking app kay overseas filipino mobile banking app and uh, the bonds.ph mobile banking app which is uh, what we call uh, bank agnostic so it, even if you have a different bank na hindi land bank or uh, no dbt you will be able to uh, use yung bonds.ph to buy our uh, future rtb issuances so that would be and one last slide is I just I don't expect anyone to memorize to listahan ito. But the point I want to make here is if you just want to buy uh, government securities, any of those fixed rate treasury bonds, treasury bills, RTBs in the secondary markets, marami pong available bank po. Marami pong bank po nag-offer yan. So any, uh, as you can see, these are the biggest banks uh, here in the country. And chances are most, if not all, of the investors na andito po sa webinar ay may account po sa isa dyan, sa nakalista dito. So again, if you want to buy sa secondary markets, hindi po yung special issuance namin, meron po, meron po. It is definitely possible for you just a call due to your bank. And lastly, the art, I have focused in this presentation uh, art, uh, government securities as investment asset for you uh, investors but in a broader sense uh, it's also an investment in the country as a whole because again uh, it allows you direct participation in nation building let me let me emphasize that every peso invested every peso we use to buy the government securities is directed no? so uh, the money that uh, we receive is directed towards the country's priority projects and programs it finances uh, the much needed social services, public sector investments, and any initiatives to uh, spur economic recovery uh, from, of course, the COVID pandemic and the ongoing uh, global uh, economic uh, uh, uncertainties we are seeing right now. So that would be all from me. Again, this is the Bureau of the Treasury, and our mandate is to fund the Republic primarily through uh, you, no? through uh, securing investment money from you, our uh, Filipino investors, through these government securities. Maraming salamat po. Thank you for that very informative presentation, Mr. Marino. Shout out muna tayo sa ating mga Facebook Live viewers from Tarlac State University College of Business and Accountancy, University of Galoocan City South Campus, New Era University Quezon City, Bicol University Gubat Campus, Polytechnic University of the Philippines, and Urdaneta City University. Shout out din po sa aking mga lawyer friends na nanonood ngayon. Sunod naman nating pakinggan ang co-founder and chief executive officer ng Investagrams na si John Christian O. Bisnar. Mr. Bisnar, co-founded Investagrams together with J.M. Lapina and Arwin Tin in 2014. Since then, they have grown Investagrams into the leading social financial platform in the Philippines. With almost a decade of experience trading in the stock market, Mr. Bisnar's goal is to help equip Filipinos with the right tools and education to succeed in the stock market. Part of the company's mission is to enable 10 million Filipinos to achieve financial freedom. Mr. Wisnar started his journey in stock market with Credit Suisse. The experiences he gained helped him achieve his first million at the age of 21. From that moment, Mr. Wisnar realized his ikigai and took it as his advocacy to share the positive impact of stock market to his fellow traders. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker, Mr. Wisnar. Hello, hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, so just want to check if audio is good.
Okay. All right. So thank you for the SEC for inviting us. So I'll be sharing uh, the story of Investagrams and what you can do in our platform and how it can help you in your investing journey. So let's begin. So we're a startup that focuses on technology para magamit natin yan to educate our fellow Filipinos and to also help more Filipinos to learn and to actually start investing. So why did we do this in the first place? What we realized in the Philippines was uh, maraming mayayaman, but it's only the people that is on the top of the chain. No? Kadalasan, yung mga regular na Pilipino, uh, dati, nung nagsimula kami, hindi pa masyado laganap yung education, financial education sa mga kababayan natin. As you can see here in the statistics, uh, there are only a few Filipinos, less than 1 million yung dati, na nag invest sa stock market. So this was our starting point. Ito yung motivation namin na, hey, we invested our own money and we had some success. Nakakatulong talaga siya. So, we also want to share it to fellow Filipinos. So, doon namin sinimula ng Instagrams. Right? So, yung goal namin is to contribute sa ecosystem natin, sa, sa investing ecosystem na rin sa Pilipinas na sana in the future, uh, 10 million Filipinos na rin yung matutumag invest. And happy to say na with the initiatives of our government agencies, yung mga iba-ibang exchanges, uh, the different fintech companies, uh, nakaka-good progress na tayo dito. No? Uh, investing and innovation na sasabay-sabay, which eto na, marami ng mga Pilipino yung na, natututo. So what can you uh, get in Investagram? Sa yung mga makukuha mo? So, Majority of our features, pwede mo siyang ma-access na libre. So may mga charts and analytics, may mga trading competitions and games, and meron rin community, social network, na pwede kang mag-engage sa mga tao na nag invest rin, and pwede mo makuha yung insights nila. And at the same time, we have tutorials, may free investing university kami, stock market, trading, trading fundamental analysis, search nyo lang Investa University. And then, ayun. You can access all of these. Karamihan ay libre lang. And if you want more advanced features, may mga premium products din kami. So ito, ito yung isang snapshot namin ng community sa Investagram. So regards sa mga ka-investa natin kung may nanunod sa inyo dito. Now, recently we had a revamp. So uh, the evolving uh, scenario or environment ng, ng investing ngayon, no? mas mas globalized na yung mga Pilipino. Pag uh, hindi na tayo focus lang sa isang merkado, maraming mga traders or investors, aware na rin sila sa iba't ibang instruments. Like recently, um, umakit yung mga crypto. Ngayon, nagbumaba na, di ba? Tapos yung mga NFTs, US market, etc. So, there's yung global, globalization, pumapasok na dito sa Pilipinas, mas nararanasan na natin. And thus, we also decided to adapt to that and to evolve our tools and education para makatulong pa rin sa kung anumang markets yung tinatakil ng mga fellow Filipinos natin. So, ito yung goal namin, to be your guide to the financial markets. So, yung mga bagong features ngayon, you can check it out, investagrams.com. Pag tingin nyo dito, makikita nyo yung iba-ibang markets, crypto, USA, Philippines, etc., mga commodities, forex, Kung makikita mo in one snapshot, ano yung mga strongest stocks ngayon? Ano yung strongest currencies? Ano yung mga strongest coins, etc.? Pwede mo rin makita ano yung highest volume, etc. So in one snapshot, makikita mo siya. Then at the same time, we have our system that curates yung mga news. So if you want to know ano ba yung mga importanteng bagay na nangyayari sa merkado ngayon, sa ekonomiya, punta lang kayo dito, tas we already aggre aggregated them for you. And then, one of our premium features sa uh, Investa Prime, um, we we employed our algorithms, mga formulas namin, to be able to analyze the market. Gano ba ka-healthy ang um, environment natin sa Pilipinas ngayon, yung market natin? Gano ba kalakas yung crypto market ngayon? Gano ba ka kalakas ang USA market ngayon? So in, may mga analytics tayo na ganito that can help those who really want to be able to know and gauge na gano ba dapat ka-aggressive at this point in time? So may mga analytics tayo na ganito. Tapos at the same time, uh, since kami, uh, investors and traders na kami before, and the, the, one of the 
keys in in successful trading or investing is just finding the strongest leaders. Kumbaga, kung meron kang sampung investments or sampung stocks, you need to be able to find the strongest or the highest quality names, diba? Doon mo doon mo papasukan ng significant na money. You diversify, but but kung ano yung mga pinaka best companies, yun yung papasukan mo. So, we employed yung formulas namin to be able to identify kung sino yung mga market leaders. So, applicable to sa kahit anong market, whether Philippines, crypto, USA, ayan. So, sample today, you can look at ano, market analytics sa sa PH. Gano ba tayo ka bullish or bearish no? So makita mo dito sa so out of all the stocks, 270 yung nasa bearish trend pa. 61 yung bullish. So majority ng stocks ngayon ay either sideways or pababa. Wala pa siyang strong. Wala pa tayo in a in a very healthy environment no. Makikita niyo naman yan sa chart pag tiningnan niyo yung mga Philippine stocks. Tapos tapos knowing that, 'di ba? Kung ganito yung makita natin, Uh, mag mag uh, ano ka muna mag taper down muna tayo na okay I won't be too aggressive right now up to the point where I can get positive signals no so yan yung isang monitoring tool natin tapos meron tayong ano din market signals dito na kapag may mga sudden trades na interesting so may sudden stocks or assets na bigla may high volume may mga break breakout or breakdown may mga new trends may identify yan ng system real time So this is one of our premium features. As ito, market leaders. So mapapansin nyo, despite despite ano the 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 showing on our, uh, our analytics or seeing the market na down tayo 20% for the year more or less, meron pa ring mga a few names that are able to become resilient, no? So ito, identified siya no system. If you look at yung prime dashboard analytics natin ngayon, si LR yung ano yung mga number one, tapos si Eagle ito yung mga stocks na nagbabak ng trend outlier sila kumbaga so even if karamihan na downtrend yung na-identify natin na okay may kakaibang galaw to and then from there on an investing standpoint pwede yung i-investigate ano bang meron dito may malaking earnings ba to may may buyout ba to etc so hindi tayo nagaano ha this is not an example on these names kumbaga pinakita lang natin yung current result so these results can change after tomorrow next week iba na to so it moves along with with the market movements as well so ganun naman talaga yung investing eh gumagalaw at nag-iiba yung sentiment yung trend so we have to be on the lookout trend and diligent on our analysis now sa USA kamusta yung USA market you can see here na ano yung score niya 30 5000 ay bearish na stocks tapos 25 yung bullish so Ganun pa rin, 'di ba? 60% mahigit ng merkado sa US, hindi wala pang mga strong signals. So 'yan, mino-monitor natin 'yan. So alam mo na looking at the the whole environment, hindi pa nananalo, nananaik yung mga bulls at this point. So ito mga ano lang 'to, no? mga technical or quantifiable metrics. But I'll, I'll also be discussing ano ba yung mga nangyayari on a macro level, economic level para maintindihan natin bakit yung yung tanong kasi yung event diba where and when to invest diba or what to invest in ayan uh, i'll give some light on that later on tapos ayun um besides the tools ito yung isang part pa ng mission namin is to help uh, Filipinos actually invest no to start so along with yung yung ano yung mga bonds retail bonds pwede na tayong mag-invest 5000 so dito rin sa investa investa.ph you can visit it Pwede kang mag-invest sa mga mutual funds or different funds na professionally managed ng mga top financial ins ins institutions for as low as 1,000 or 100, depende sa minimum ng mga company. So it's a good way to start din. So anong iniba nito sa stocks? no So karamihan ng mga mutual funds, stocks din yung laman ng funds nila. Ang iniba lang is para to sa mga busy na tao na kung hindi mo na naaral yung market or busy ka, ayaw mo na i-monitor. May mga professional professional fund managers uh, on these entities, Phil Equity, Sun Life, BPI, Atram, and etc. These are some of our partners. Na they will, their team will be managing the pooled funds for you. So may mga iba-iba silang klase na funds. May mga aggressive, conservative, etc. And you have to know na kahit na maganda yung mutual fund, lalo na sa busy na tao or kunyari 
sir, nakakalitutong financial markets, daming numbers, daming mga indicator, naka, nalilito pa po ako. So kung gusto mo lang simulan, okay to. Ito yung mga tipong di mo na need isipin. No? And maliit lang yung minimum. So this, this is a good avenue for starters. But you have to also know na kahit na pang beginner siya or it requires little knowledge, you have to be knowledgeable pa rin. May, may base knowledge ka in terms of gano'n ba ka tough yung market environment today, right? Kasi yung mga mutual funds, they also track yung performance ng pinag i nila. So kung yung fund is focused in the Philippines or the fund is focused on the US, then yung performance ng hawak nilang fund would be equivalent dun sa, sa performance ng bansa or assets na pinofocusan nila. Okay, I'll, I'll be showing that. So ito lang, just to have an idea, uh, pagpunta mo sa Invest na PH, so madali lang, you can... You can be you can open your account uh 10, 30 minutes to 1 hour confirmed ka now. So mabilis yung onboarding natin dito. Then you can see the funds categories. Marami tayong mga ano dito to help you choose better. So gusto mo makita top performing funds, click mo lang yung mga nandito. Mga moderate risk funds, conservative, aggressive, meron ring globally focused funds, meron din yung mga fixed income funds or yung mga nagfo-focus sa mga mas conservative or fixed reward assets, fixed instruments. So, nandiyan. So, it really depends sa risk profile mo. We also have tools and guides so that you can know yourself better. So, may mga questionnaire tayo para malaman ano bang bagay sa'yo, conservative, aggressive, or moderate. No? Ngayon, ito yung sinasabi ko. So, uh, the performance of the funds, may chance rin or may mga years na hindi parating positive yan. Lalo na ngayon na kaya nga tayo may mga ganitong event, di ba, na na globally may may ano slow down sa growth, inflation matataas, sa Pilipinas may inflation din, tas interest rates tumataas. So generally, we're we're in we're entering a very I think challenging market environment locally and globally. All right. Tapos so ito PSE, just so you have an idea, nag-start tayo 7,000 plus. Tapos ngayon we're at 58 so if you calculate that, ma, we're down 18, 20% for the year, right? So if you you've invested na yung general connotation kasi sa investing, di ba, long term yan, na parang wag ka na masyado mag-isip, maglag, maglagay ka lang ng maglagay ng pera. Tapos over time, aakit yan. But I'd like to point out na the, the, the core of investing is good. Yung parang nagsisave ka, naglalagay ka, naglalagay. Okay yan, makakatulong talaga sa'yo. Pero it would help us further lalo na yung mga limited lang ang resource na tao. Siyempre, hindi naman tayo only money, di ba? Na to be wiser in terms of ano ba tong environment na hinaharap natin. Okay? So, alam natin ngayon, okay, ito yung, ito yung sa Pilipinas, down tayo 20%. And yung itsura niya, yung, yung view ko dito, if you look at the charts, the, the fundamental factors, may, may potential downside pa. So, knowing that, example, uh, 5, 8 ngayon, we can go down another 10, 20% over, let's say, 6, 12 months. Hindi natin masasabi. Pero knowing that, no, na may possibility ganun, you would, you can conserve your allocations. Kung baga, instead na ngayon ka bumomba na, uy, may, may event sila, sir, excited na ako mag-invest. Instead na puruhan mo kagad, pwede kang magdahan-dahan. Aral muna, tapos take it, take it slowly. Up to the point na yung mga factors na makikita natin na nagpapababa ng mga merkado at ekonomiya ay bumaliktad na. So I'll be discussing that. So medyo limited na yung time ko but I'll be giving this out. no. So Because I want more investors to be guided. So this is the index ng, ng America, S&P 500. Ito yung representation ng top 500 companies nila. If you can weekly chart to. So if you can see as well, mula 2012, 2018, mahigit uptrend lang yan na dire-diretso solid. Walang problema. Parang lahat ng dips, sinasalo ng uptrend. That's backed by the low interest environment and only support ng Fed, ng government ng US, na kahit anong crisis, binib, nagpiprint lang sila ng pera, binababaan nila interest rates para mas spur yung economic activity. Yung problema recently, ang iniba ngayon is meron na tayong inaharap na inflation. So tumataas yung mga inflation, 8% sa bansa natin, ano ba, 7 to 7 plus percent din. So the problem with that is kailangan na nilang i-adjust rin yung interest rates kasi may iba silang problema. Hindi lang economic growth. Meron ng inflation, may another problem na need nilang isolve. So 
yung sustainability ng low interest environment, yung 0 to 1% interest rate na ang dali lang pala humiram ng pera, mag-deploy ng pera before. Kaya ang tataas ng markets, lahat ng fund manager, easy-easy lang yung mga pera. But now, interest rates have r- rose na at, a, at the highest pace in history. So I'll show you. So ito, this is the 10-year yield. Ito yung mga bond yield sa USA. So isa sa mga reflection to no kung kamusta yung yung scenario doon. Tapos sumusunod lang rin to sa sa rates movement ng ng ano ng government nila. So yung yield ng 10-year bonds nila is approaching for 4% na. And what is the significance of that? Papunta na siya sa 10-year plus high at 20 eto 2009-2010, diba? So 12-year high siya, 10-year mahigit which is ano which sakto yan dahil yung past 2012 to 2020 bago mag pandemic parang easy mode lang yung mga markets and yung financial yung eco- economic environment kasi eh, mababa interest sige deploy lang kayo pera kahit saan yung gusto grow tayo ng grow pero ngayon na kailangan ng mag-adjust ng mga governments sa mga bansa nag-iiba na yung timpla ng market, di ba? So, dahil 4% na to higher interest rates, hindi na ganun kadali mag-deploy ng pera. Yung risk appetite ng mga tao, mas conservative na sila. Plus, kung may inflation ka na unsolved, 7 8%, or can even go at 10% kung sakaling hindi pa siya na-manage in the next two quarters, kung sakaling nagkagera pa, yung, kung may inflation ka pa, Nas basically lahat tayo, lahat tayo mga Pilipino, lahat ng consumers, yung buying power natin na nababawasan ng 7-10% kung magkano pa yung inflation. So another bawas yan sa investor sentiment. Okay? So what I'm pointing out here is maging conservative tayo. So rin, uh, we're not, ano, hindi tayo, wala tayo masyado iniba sa US. So yung 10-year, apektado rin tayo kung ano nangyari sa global. 10-year yields natin, 7% dito sa chart natin. Pero pag tinignan mo, ang interesting thing dito ah, na you need to be wary is pumapasok tayo sa 8 to 10% which is the same levels nung nag-2008 financial crisis. So yung 2008 financial crisis, extreme point na yan in history. Diba? Yan yung laging kinukote na ang lala, lahat dito nag-bankrupt, ang dami nagsarado, etc. Wala pa tayong masyado nakikitang ganyan na extreme na marami nagsasarado. The, the, the thing that we're seeing right now is inflation is starting to hurt companies, starting to hurt consumer demand. Tapos, yung mga companies are starting to adjust their growth projections and becoming more conservatives now with the budgets like the Shopee na, na, nagbawas na ng tao, mga Lazada, or I'm not sure with the Lazada, pero may mga, mga aggressive tech companies nagbabawas na yan. Kami, even, we're also controlling our budget. So, mga kumpanya nag adjust mawawalan ng mga trabaho, ito na, ito yung real effect nung, nung high inflation. Tapos may combo pa yan na high interest rates. So basically, we're in a very challenging market environment. Na kung, kung mag, mag-invest ka sa stocks, dapat mas i- i-adjust natin yung expectation natin of return. Kung baga kung dati, ang dali gumawa na pera, ngayon mas we have to choose our spots wisely and allocate properly. This is a snapshot of the Philippine inflation. Yan, nasa 7% halos tayo. Tapos, pag tinake note mo, 10-year chart or 5-year, 10 years, ayun, nasa all-time yan within the past few years. So, mataas talaga. Ito, sa USA, nasa at around all times, all-time high sa inflation. And ang problema dito is it's not just about dahil ang tagal na nating low interest environment, ang daming perang na print, hindi lang yun yung rason kung ba't tumataas yung mga bilihin, yung mga limited resources. There are tons of challenges in in ano, supply chain challenges, yung mga global trade. Diba? Papansin nyo, si McDonald's naubusan ng patatas. but ka mauubusan ng patatas sa Pilipinas? Ang daming farm. Diba? So ibig sabihin nun, kung something na as common as a patatas, nagkaka, nagkaka-shortage ang isang food giant kagaya ni McDo, that tells you something na, uy, we're in different times. And if you research deeply, yung food shortage na yun, hindi ganun kababaw, hindi lang patatas na masusolve ng one month. Marami ang interconnection between other countries. Yung geopolitical risks, nakaka-apekto rin yan. Yung mga trade channels, nahihinto. Yung Russia, nagsarado ng mga trade channel, maapektuhan yung energy demand, energy supply ng ibang bansa, yung Europe, 
dahil maapektuhan yung energy supply nila, matataas yung mga bayar, bayarin nila sa travel and delivery. So magkaka-ripple-ripple effect yan aside pa dun sa food shortages. So maraming reason bakit may inflation. And, and hindi siya basta masusolve lang na okay, government, pasok tayo. Itaas natin yung interest rates. Hindi siya ganun kadali. Makakatu, isa siya sa solutions pero hindi siya ganun kadali. That's something you have to take note of. Philippine inflation rate, same thing. Five year plus high tayo. And so this is something we have to be wary. Yung, yung mga bilihin ngayon, di ba? Kung yung ano, Jolly Hot Dog dati, 30 ngayon, ano na, 70 na, 60 plus. Parang layo niyan. And, and we may not see it, lalo na sa middle class, na parang okay lang, kain tayo, milk tea ka. Pero sa mga regular na Pilipino, and if this continues, this is not curbed, it will affect rin what's happening in the investing world, in the markets. And also, the reason I'm pointing this is knowing may mga ganito tayong challenges, as consumers, as regular people, need nating i-balance yung ano, budgeting natin, aggressiveness natin sa markets. Kasi nga, may mga fundamental problem na hindi ganun kadali ma-solve, hindi agad-agad ma-solve. Ito. So, sorry, ah, na-extend ng konti. I'll be wrapping up two minutes na lang, three minutes. <laughs> PE ratio ng, ng PSE. Ito yung valuation ng Philippines. Usually, ang, ang Philippine stocks ay tinitignan at a premium. So, average natin for five years is 19 times PE. 19 times PE, no? So, medyo premium tayo. Parang mahal yung, parang, uy, okay na bansa to. High growth. So, mata willing ako bayaran na mataas tong, tong investments ko sa Pilipinas. Ganun yung tingin ng fund managers. But recently, we've been trading at 12 times PE, yung market natin sa Philippines. So, parang slowly, nag-take into account na, na mas conservative na yung fund managers. Tapos, at the same time, yung growth expectations, mababa na rin. So, that's something to consider. Tapos, it doesn't mean na, ano ah, na mababa, mura na to. It can be cheap for a reason. So maaring 12 times PE tayo ngayon, mukhang lower than average. Pero kapag nag-put nag -put into play pa yung mga inflation problems, higher interest rates, more conservative business, reversal yung earnings, babagal, magkakalosses, then ayan, pwedeng bumaba pa. Yung mura ngayon, maaring magmura pa. So that's something you have to take into consideration. Okay, so to wrap it up, uh, ano, yung pinaka... So thank you for the chance to be able to share what we do in our company. But it's also my advocacy rin na when you teach investing, it's not just about selling products. Diba? Na parang bigay mo lang, invest ka, ganyan. Selling the idea, tas yayaman ka. You also have to be wary of the downside, the risks. And as a professional trader, you, ano yun eh, half of the making uh, tons of money is sidestepping. Kapag alanganin yung environment, wag mo pilitin. So know when to be aggressive. And this is not the right time. Parang you have to be conservative ngayon. Ngayon ka matuto, ngayon ka may conservative. So my final two points are control your size. So marami na tayong ini-investan, whether stocks, mutual funds, uh, bonds. Instead na kung yung usual natin, maglalagay tayo 10,000 pesos a month, pwede mong i-ano muna yan, i-minimize yung exposure mo. Pwede instead na 10K, baka 5K muna ilagay mo, 3K muna up to the point where we see factors become brighter na, mas maganda na, may reversal na dun sa mga nagpapababa ng market ngayon. And these are not ano, minor issues, di ba? So I'll be highlighting, ano ba yung dapat nating tingnan? Adjust your aggressiveness depending on how these metrics may perform. So local and global inf inflation, pag 7 to 10% yan, alanganin yan. Ideally, we want to be below 5, 4%, 3%, ayan, back, to, back to the normal contained times. So that's one thing. Um, yung rate hike, pagtaas ng interest rates ng US market, kung ano gawin nila, susunod lang lahat halos. Eh. Diba? So pag nakita natin na yung, yung pagtaas ng interest rate sa, sa USA ay bumabagal na or nagdi-decrease na naman sila ng interest rates, that can trigger some market positivity. And then geopolitical conflicts kapag nabawasan yung gera or yung, yung tension sa, sa Russia, Ukraine, USA with China, etc. Yung mga potential cold war, hindi man literal na barilan na gera, mayroon ring trade war and cold war. Eh. Yan nga yung nakaka-affect ng economy, slow economic kill and slow economic problems. Eh. So we have to monitor that. Eh, hindi naman need na sobrang lalim ng knowledge natin. It can be just mere storytelling, di ba? parang for fun. As a Filipino investor, pwede mo lang monitor ano naman nangyari sa mga to. Tapos supply chain problems being solved. 
yung mga trade problems, food shortages, yung mga energy costs, dapat makontain yan no, along with inflation. And if these four factors have been solved, susunod naman yan na mas marami ng inflation bababa, mas marami na tayo makoconsume, earnings ng company mas magiging goods, mas aggressive na ulit yung fund managers. And yun, Basically, we're not timing the market, but we're knowledgeable or aware enough so that we can invest properly. So, alagaan natin, pera natin. So, ayun. Thank you so much sa oras na binigay niyo. Thank you for that very passionate discussion, Mr. Bisnar. Our third speaker is Mr. Oliver Y. Tan, President and Chief Executive Officer of the City Core Energy Rate Corporation the country's first energy-themed real estate investment trust. He is also the president and CEO of its sponsor, CityCore Renewable Energy Corporation, and parent company, CityCore Power Incorporated. He steered the group to becoming one of the leading solar energy generators in the Philippines today with an aggregate attributable generation capacity of 205 megawatts direct current. Prior to his focus in the energy industry, he served as a chief financial officer of Citicorp Power's sister company, Megawide Construction Corporation, a leading engineering procurement and construction conglomerate in the country, where he has been an instrumental in growing its revenues and assets. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker, Mr. Tan. Sir? Magandang hapon, Commissioner Kelvin. Attorney Basiliona, sa ibang speakers, SEC representatives, at sa lahat ng nagsa-celebrate ng World Investor Week at nanonood sa Facebook. I am Oliver Tan, President and CEO of CityCore Energy REIT Corporation, or CREIT. Allow me to present CREIT, the Philippines' first energy team REIT, at sana makakuha kayo ng idea kung bakit isa to sa mga okay na investment options ngayon. Um, next slide. Just a disclaimer, this presentation is for information only. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, we will be following the uh, following agenda, the spirit snapshots, financial highlights, and key takeaways. Sino ba si City Core REIT? CREIT is a real estate investment trust or a REIT company. As in any REIT company, CREIT owns and manages income-generating real estate properties with particular focus on renewable energy properties, meaning meron kaming properties na pinaparenta sa mga renewable energy players or solar plants. Kumikita si CREIT through the lease revenues paid by the solar plant tenants. And according to the REIT law, lahat ng REIT companies ay required to declare dividends of at least 90% of its distributable income annually. This is one of the things that make REIT companies a good investment kasi sure na makakatanggap yung shareholders ng stable cash flow in the form of dividends. Our sponsor, or parent company, CityCore Renewable Energy Company, or CREC, effectively owns 61.7% of CREC, while the rest I own by public shareholders. In compliance with the REIT law, Nagtayo kami ng City Corp Fund Managers and City Corp Property Managers. Sila yung nagmamanage and nag oversee ng fund-related activities and property management services sa mga properties namin. As of current, CIRIT owns one solar plant and six parcels of land. These are all list out to solar, plant, sol solar power plant operators na nagbabayad kay CIRIT ng guaranteed based annual lease at variable lease. Next slide shows series highlights in a snapshot, which I shall be explaining in detail in the following slides. First, series has expansive leasing assets. Here you can see series portfolio. Meron kami ngayong total land area of almost 200 hectares with an appraised value of 14.5 billion pesos. You may note that all land holdings have long-term lease contracts with the earliest expiring in 2039, latest by 2046, ibig sabihin secured ang source of revenue ni Sirit for a long time. Second, the installed generation capacity of Sirit's solar plant tenants totals to 145 megawatt DC. 
and nakaspread ito sa Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Since CIRIT relies on lease revenues to earn, importante tingnan ang occupancy and vacancy rates or kung lahat ba ng properties merong tenants. With CIRIT, occupancy will always be 100%. As mentioned earlier, we have long-term lease contracts with the tenants with the earliest expire by 2039. Kung titignan natin yung weighted average lease expiry ng lahat ng properties natin, we enjoy a very high 20.82 years, much higher than the usual lease expires of other REITs as average tenants for commercial and office buildings would only lease for five to seven years. Yung relevance nito, mas nakita natin nung imposition of strict quarantine restrictions where most offices declared work from home and halos walang tao sa mga commercial mall. Recently then, nakita natin sa news yung exodus ng Pogo, leaving office buildings vacant. Pero for CIRIT, this is not a problem because of the long-term nature of our contracts and because our tenants are solar plant operators and the energy industry is essential. In terms naman sa kakayanan ng tenants na magbayad ng lease obligations or ng renta kay CIRIT, as you can see here, our tenants who are solar plants sell electricity to either the government through Transco or to private customers. Outside of these contracts, pwede din silang magbenta sa wholesale electricity spot market or the WESM, where they enjoy a right of first dispatch meaning electricity sold by our tenants will immediately be sold to the first customer. Dahil dito, sa pag-prioritize ng gobyerno sa development ng renewable energy industry. As explained earlier, CIRIT currently has almost 200 hectares of land holdings with equivalent 145 megawatt DC in installed generation capacity. Given the expertise of our sponsor, CIREC, in developing and constructing renewable energy power plants, pwedeng mag-increase by up to six times yung current capacity ni CIRIT to 950 megawatt DC by the end of 2024. CIRIT also offers a sustainable investment platform. The CityCor Power Group has pioneered the agro-solar concept in the country wherein nakakapagtanim tayo ng ibang vegetables or crops sa ilalim at sa gilid ng ating solar panels. With this, we think na ma-maximize natin yung pwedeng paggamit sa land. We also strive for inclusive growth and have partnered with PESDA. Nagpro-provide tayo ng scholarships and employment to deserving underprivileged students dun sa host, host communities natin or sa areas kung nasaan yung properties natin. The solar plants of our tenants likewise contribute to the reduction of our carbon footprint, and we estimate that they eliminate 231,000 tons of carbon dioxide per year. Lagi natin nadidinig at na-experience yung effects ng climate change, so we think it is important what, that we do our part. We're also proud to be the first recipient in Southeast Asia of Cicero's Dark Green Rating, CICERO is a leading institute for climate research in Norway, and this rating represents CIRIT's strong environmental soundness and long-term support on low-carbon climate resiliency. In this slide, papakita lang namin yung agrosolar in action. Now, going over to some financial highlights. CIRIT was listed in the Philippine Stock Exchange last February and became a full renewable energy REIT company Lahat ng kita ni CIRIT from 2022 onwards ay nanggagaling lang sa leasing revenue. For the first half of the year, we recorded 664 million pesos in revenues and a net income of 601 million pesos. We'll be sharing in a bit how this translates to distribu distributable income na basis ng dividend payout. Our strong and healthy balance sheet allows us to have a solid footing to acquire pipeline assets that would add value to our company. Sa ngayon, uh, walang utang si CIRIT, and just recently, we were given an investment grade credit rating by Phil Ratings, indicating our strong capacity to meet or pay our obligations. 
Recall that REIT companies are mandated to declare dividend of at least 90% of distributable income. Dito sa si REIT, ang goal namin is to pay more than 90%. Here you can see how we compute for our payout. On your right side, you can see that we have consistently been declaring more than the minimum 90% of distributable income requirement. And we aim to continue this trajectory as we build up our asset portfolio. This is why CRIT can be attractive to the passive type fixed income investors as we can also give out a stable revenue stream through cash dividends. For key takeaways today, in summary, we would like to reiterate CRIT's strong financial performance due from our lease revenues coming from the 100% occupancy of our seven green asset portfolio. Lahat ng tenants namin ay solar power plants who have solid operating track record and maintain a diversified customer base. CREC as the sponsor has a clear pipeline of projects with its 1.5 gigawatt VC target of which land and renewable energy asset may be acquired by CREC. We offer a socially responsible investment platform ensuring positive impact and sustainable development. Dahil sa mga to, Naniniwala kami na CIRIT will be able to deliver its planned dividends and a superior dividend yield to its shareholders. This ends the CIRIT company presentation. Please feel free to raise any question to us during the Q&A portion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tan and the rest of our speakers. Ngayon ay may idea na tayo kung paano sisimula ng ating investment journey. At mas marami pa tayong matututunan sa ating panel discussion where we will delve deeper into the basics of investing. This afternoon session will be moderated by Salve I. Duplito, founder and CEO of Empower and Transform OPC, who will also share her insights as a longtime advocate for financial literacy. First during her stint as business journalist for ANC, at ngayon bilang financial beshi ng bayan sa kanyang YouTube at Facebook social media pages. Para mas pasiglahin ng ating discussion, ay sasamahan din tayo ni City Core Energy Rit Corporation Chairman Edgar Saavedra. Mr. Saavedra has more than 20 years of experience in engineering and construction, establishing megawide construction corporation less than a year after graduating from college. As founder and top executive, Edgar has led the diversification of Megawide from a mid-sized construction firm to a diversified engineering and infrastructure innovator. Now as a chairperson of CRIT, Mr. Edgar is leading the company in its pursuit of a net zero carbon future and embarking on an aggressive expansion to build an additional 1,500 MW of renewable energy capacity in the next five years to achieve this goal. At syempre, magkakasama pa rin natin sila Mr. Edgar Marino mula sa Bureau of Treasury, Mr. John Snar mula sa Investograms, at Mr. Oliver Tan mula sa Crete. So Ms. Salve, ma, we hand you over the floor. Thank you, beautiful attorney Badet. Maraming salamat po sa napakagaling na pag-host ninyo ng programang ito. At magsha-shoutout na ako sa 775 million viewers natin sa Facebook ngayon. <laughs> Di ba? At nakakatuwa. Merong mga OFW from Lebanon. Merong mga estudyante from Davao. A lot of people are listening to us. And tama lang yun kasi napakahirap ng buhay ngayon. Kaya nga, pagka iniisip mo, hindi mo talaga maa-afford na hindi mag-ipon, magbayad ng utang at mag-invest, lalo na ngayon. Dahil uh, aabangan pa natin yung mga paghihirap na menensyo ni JC kanina, di ba? Anyway, mangungumusta ako sa mga taga-SEC na nakikinig ngayon. Maraming salamat sa event na ito. Uh, thank you. Uh, kumusta ka dyan, Ed? Tawagin ko na lang Ed M. Kasi dalawa silang Ed eh. So si Ed M. Husay, di ba guys? Press one kayo dyan na naintindihan natin ang pagkukwento niya tungkol sa bonds kasi in Filipino. Naaliw talaga ako doon. O si GC din, Pinoy na Pinoy. Ang galing. Akalain mo dati mga worse worse ang kausap niya sa Credit Suisse. Di ba JC? <laughs> At syempre si Oli. Agalog din. Yun lang, merong ano Chinese ba yung ating... Uh, 
Chinese. Eto si Ed. Ang aabangan ninyo. Gal- galing lang sa Binondo yan. Oh, galing sa Binondo. Eto si Ed S. Ang accent nito ay ano, Bisaya. Ano bisaya. Ba, Ed? <laughs> I am very happy to be your moderator for today. At dediretso, alam mo, magda-dive in na ako dun sa mga katanungan dahil sayang oras, hanggang 2.50 lang tayo. Kaya, uh, feeling ko punta tayo agad kay Ed M. ng, ng taga Bureau of Treasury. Bureau of the Treasury, di ba, Ed M? Yes. Uh, yeah. yan, ang, yan ang tama. Nag-cover ako ng Treasury nung bata-bata pa ako eh. <laughs> maritesa ng maritesa lang talaga yan. No? Meron kasing mga katanungan na uh, malaki ang papel ng DTR, di ba? Sa usaping fiscal, pinansyal ng ating bansa. Mari mo bang bigyan ng ating Facebook Live viewers ng brief summary kung ano yung mga gampani ng inyong ahensya? Alam ko, minention mo na to kanina eh. Siyempre, when you buy all of these treasury bills and treasury bonds, parang partner ka ng government sa development. Kasi kahit lima piso lang bili mo niyan, yung pera na yun mapupunta sa paggawa ng kalsada. Di ba? Tama ba yun? Other than that, meron pa ba kami ibang dapat malaman? tungkol sa role ng BTR tungkol sa pag-develop ng ating bansa. Yes, maraming salamat Ms. Salve for the you know, question. Now, I think the uh, the short of it is the BTR ay responsible for funding the republic. Yan po yung tagline namin sa aming ano, sa aming logo and sa aming seat. So, funding the republic. So, doon po yung ano uh, uh, summary of what we do and the specifics ay of course yung pangunguta. So, kailangan po nating umutang para pondokan ang mga programa ng ating national government. And, of course, as the Treasury, kami rin po ang kaban ng bayan. So, lahat ng, ano, lahat ng revenues kung sa BIR, mga buwis, mga customs, whenever there's an import, ano, duties na pinapataw, pumapasok po lahat yan sa Treasury. And, of course, uh, since nasa amin ng pera, kami rin po nagbibigay ng pera sa mga ahensya para sa kanilang mga programa. So, kung may DepEd para sa kanyang school building and pagbayad ng mga teacher, or DOH, yung sa kanyang mga hospital, and of course, pagbayad ng kanilang ano, mga uh, healthcare staff, and uh, so on and so forth. So, yun po, uh, funding the Republic. Yun, na mga usay, lahat na GC and ano, Oli and Ed S, ha, pagka meron kayong gustong i-sing it, go lang. Okay lang, hindi, hindi ako controlling. Next. <laughs> May ganun agad. Anyway, so uh, may follow-up question ako sa iyo, Ed M. Kasi sabi ng mga tao, oh, gusto namin maging partner ng gobyerno, pero parang ang dating ng, ng treasury bonds at treasury bills, yayamanin. Mm-hmm. Papansinin ba yung mapakaliit na invest, investable funds? Of course. I think uh, over the last few years, yun nga, yun nga po ang aming, ano, no, ang aming initiative to expand the participation of our retail investors to the sell government uh, securities. And uh, I think that impression is partly also because eh, yung ano, kulang lang po sa ano, financial, ano, uh, well, financial literacy and of course exposure dito sa GS. So kung ano-ano na po ang naiisip ng mga, ano, uh, mga tao na pang mayaman lang. But actually, I would argue po, ano, misalbi na, Itong government securities ay mas relevant po for, for us, no? for normal investors. Kasi uh, this is, as I mentioned, the closest to risk-free dito sa, ano, sa bansa natin. Kung tayo po ay limited lang ang capital or limited lang po ang savings para sa investment, kailangan po tayo mag-ingat. No? Kailangan po natin i-prioritize ang ating uh, safety ng ating kapital ng principal sa ating mga investment before we can think of returns. And that's the uh, value proposition nitong government securities. Pres- uh, Mapepreserve po, sigurado po mababayaran kayo ng Republika pag nagmature yung uh, binili ninyong GS. Ayun. Alam ko na yung mga nakikinig sa at sa, I- sa iyo, Ed. Ano, mamaya magtatanong, saan ba binibilihan, saan nalalaman yung presyo niyan, etc. Babalikan muna kita kasi makikipagmaritesan muna ako dito kay JC. Eh, ang ganda ng kwento nito ni JC, batang-bata pa, meron ng investagrams. Meron nga ako nung dito sa telepono ko, JC, lagi ako nakalag-in. Kasi tinicheck ko talaga yan lagi. 
Uh, kanina, kinuwento mo yung simula ng inyong kumpanya, ano yung ma-offer. Sana lahat ng nakikinig dito, lalo na yung mga estudyante, nakinig kayo ng mabuti kay JC kasi makikita nyo na kung paano malalaman sino ang leader sa market, di ba? Parang ganyan ngayon, JC. Alam ko na yung mga nakikinig sa atin, gusto talaga nila malaman mutual funds. Kasi medyo, baka yung iba natatakot pa. Ano ba yung sirit na yan? Ano ba yung mega wide? Ano, di ba? Medyo natatakot pa. Pero mamaya, i-explain din nila yan ni Oli tsaka ni Ed S. Pero pagdating sa mutual funds, ano ba kasi yung benepisyo nito sa ordinaryong investor? Ulitin lang natin para dun sa baka medyo nag-zone out kanina, ano yung pinaka-basics? If you were to describe it, let's say, in less than three minutes, oh. ano ba, ano ba, paano mo ba siya iti-describe? Well, yung pinaka-core benefit ng mutual fund is, ano, perfect for, ano, beginners and those busy na people. So, kunwari, negosyante ka na dedicated ka sa bigasan nyo, sa manukan mo, sa restaurant mo, wala ka ng oras to monitor and understand financial markets monitor them every day, understand what the different assets are, yung mutual fund na yung bahala sa inyo. So, ito na yung mga professional fund managers na nasa biggest financial institutions, mga partners natin, sila na yung maggagawa ng investing para sa sa'yo. So, yun lang. Basically, um, pinasa mo yung capital mo dun sa mga financial sa fund managers, tapos sila na yung mag-decision making para sa sa'yo. Quick, quick lang, JC, bago ko pumunta kay Oli tsaka kay Ed S. Paano sila pipili? Eh, ang daming choices, di ba? Ano yung hahanapin nila? Ano yung cost nun sa kanila? Kasi syempre, parang sila yes. nag-hire ng sarili nilang fund manager nun, di ba? Uh, Para yes. sila mag invest Ano naman yung kapalit nun? Magkano yung fees? Paano sila uh, mamimili? Okay. So, fees. Ang fees kadalasan, I think depending on the fund, no? it can range from 1% or less than 1% sa sa buong taon na hawak mo yung yung fund na yun. So usually ganyan yung management fees or yung yung parang carry cost nila. In terms of choosing yung the right funds to to invest in, uh, may iba-iba yan. So yung first is ano yung may mga funds tayo na aggressive, conservative or moderate. Pero so it, it, it ipapantay mo kung anong klasing tao ka basta kung millennial ka na na uh, may work ka naman so baka pwedeng mid 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 level yung aggressiveness mo pwede kang magpumasok sa mga funds na na exposed rin sa stocks sa equities so yung kasi ang iniba noon yung mga equity based funds may volatility sila so minsan up ka 10% minsan or sa pag pag ano lamya alanganin yung market, madadown ka rin at the same time no parang mood so, yan, ko lang yan JC no oh. minsan masaya minsan masungit Tama, tama. So, very moody yung market ngayon. Parang ano, galit pa siya. Pero at the same time, uh, may mga funds na focus rin sa instruments gaya ng sinabi ni Sir Eduardo. Mga bonds, mga, mga fixed money markets, etc. So, ito yung mga conservative na funds na parang gusto mo lang itabi savings mo kesa naka-alkansya lang, kesa tulog lang. And dun mo pwedeng ilagay yung mga money market funds. And at the same time, siguro, another tip, uh, research the profile of the 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 mutual fund and the fund managers kasi may may iba ko nyari ah idol ko to si Mr. Ganto parang alam ko malupit yung market reading nito etc parang may track record na siya 20 years ganyan that can also be a factor in in ano where you trust your fund pwede yun ang galing o di may perspective na tayong lahat dun sa bonds treasury bills mutual funds pero yung iba gusto talaga nila yung feeling na Pagisi nila ng umaga, stock market investor ako, dahil diretso na ako sa market. O kaya, okay. yung darling ng investments, di ba? Yung real estate investment trust, di ba, JC? Kasi parang naalala ko noong 2020, takot na takot yung mga tao sa COVID. Pero umakyat yung mga REITs okay. kasi nga bago, bago siya. Matanong ko naman to si Oli tsaka si Ed. Ed, huwag mo na akong papagalitan sa buhok ko. Alam ko yung first investment <laughs> instrument mo ay hair dryer. Oh guys, press one sa nagagandahan sa buhok ni Ed kasi pinaghihirapan niya yan araw-araw. <laughs> oh, di ba Ed? Uh, pagka pinag-usapan natin yung real estate investment trust na tinatawag o REITs, eh, ita- isa ito sa mga bagong-bagong investment products na maaaring pagpilian ng ating mga tao, pwede mo bang explain sa atin paano ba ito nag-work talaga? 
uh, eh yung ikaramihan sa atin meron naman talaga investment sa lupa, 'di ba? Kunwari pinana o kaya binili, may konto, may bahay ganyan. Pero wala naman silang pera magtayo ng mall o kaya ng solar plant katulad mo. Oh, walang billion-billion. Pero how can they invest in these kinds of things with only minimum? Siguro magkano ba, JC? 10,000? 20,000? Pero pwede na pala. Tapos malalaking property companies. Tama ba, JC? Yung, tama ba yung numero ko, JC? Bakit? Lower na nga yata ngayon. Eh. Lower Depende na. Sa, oh, 5K oh, or 1K. 5,000. O, di ba? Eh, pa-explain naman. Baka pwede mong kayong dalawa ni Oli mag-explain sa ating mga nanonood ngayon. Oh, sige, explain yeah. ka, Oli. Mas magaling ka magpaliwanag sa finance. <laughs> yeah. oh, joke so, time um, daw um, si Ed. Uh, Oli, pang serious ikaw, ha? Time. Mamaya pang joke <laughs> time si Ed naman. Yeah. So, ang REITs can be an alternative to mutual funds or because it is, it is hybrid in the sense na you own Uh, ownership of the company at the same time you have the same features of a fixed income every quarter nagdi-declare kami ng dividend so every quarter may matatanggap kang dividendo and uh, one of the advantage uh, unlike mutual fund or or, or uh, other securities is wala tong maturity meaning you have the benefit of liquidity event because we are listed so kung biglang uh, kailangan mo ng pera tomorrow or next week, you can always sell at the market. Of course, depending on how much yung share price is traded at that time. But unlike certain time deposits or, or ano, you have to hold one month or so may, may holding period. Ito, you have the benefit, pigla mo kailangan ng pera, you can sell. At the same time, uh, kumikita ka rin ng uh, fixed income. No? How a REIT work is, uh, you are actually buying an ownership of the piece of land kasi ang REIT they they invest in real estate properties tulad namin uh, we have around 200 hectares in total yung aming uh, land holding sempre for you to buy a 200 hectares and for you to put up a solar plant you would require billion pesos investment ito um, i believe for you to buy um one board lot namin i think is 1000 shares no So we're we're trading at two pesos and something. So for as low as two thousand pesos, makabili ka na ng ownership, a portion of ownership of the underlying land asset. So itong land namin, ang particular focus ng investment, kasi maraming klasing real estate properties, pwedeng commercial mall, office building. Yung sa atin, focus talaga siya for renewable energy. So mga lupa natin, pinaparent natin sa mga solar plant operators. So based on sa rental na nakukuha natin, um, more than 90% we declare dividends. So quarterly, kumikita yung ating shareholder like a fixed income din. Naalala ko, Ed, hindi na po ito ni Jay. Hindi na po pagkapaliwanag. <laughs> <ba? laughs> o, oh, yung version mo naman. Hindi na lang ako. Pero Ed, nakakatuwa kasi bagong-bago pa to, isa na kayo sa nauna. Tapos na-realize ko nga kanina habang nagkukwento si JC, ang kahirapan sa mundo ngayon, pati global value chains, apektado. Paano mo dadalhin yung, alam mo yung picture ng mga kamatis na babu- nabubulok, nakakainis, di ba? Pero hindi nabubulok yung solar power, no? hindi kailangan itrack. Pali, paliwanag mo sa kanila yung difference <laughs> kami, yung ano pala, yung read sa kayong kunyari sa stock market. Yung mas oh. volatile yung stocks. Ano, ano yung paano yung pagkakaiba? Kasi sanay na sanay ah. na tayo sa stocks. Yung iba siguro nakikinig dito, sanay na how stocks work. Ano pa ba yung sure. pagkakaiba ng REIT sa stocks? Yeah, ang different ng REIT, yung, yung dividend yield, meaning kung ano yung dividend uh, na natatanggap mo, move inversely with the share price. So ibig sabihin, as the share price goes down, tumataas yung dividend yield actually na natatanggap mo. And uh, so it uh, it behaves uh, compared to a typical stock. Sempre on a typical stock, habang bawa yung share price. Yes, maari na ka ng at a cheaper price in terms of a PE ratio. Eto habang bawa baba, nare reward yung mga bumibili sa mas mababang presyo in that in the sense na mas mataas yung dividend effective dividend yield na natatanggap niya. Mm, gets nyo ba guys? Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, press one. Sa- Sabi, 
ibig sabihin, pag bumili ka ng stock market, yung presyo mo pwede bumaba, pwede mas malikot ang presyo niya. Pero, Pero pag bumili ka ng REIT, o pag REIT stock, ang binibili mo, mas hindi sa malikot, mas steady siya. Yung up and down niya, maliit lang. Hmm. And sa panahon ngayon, kunwari, pa-retire na si Mams, o kaya si Tatang pa-retire na, hindi na, na kaya, hindi na kaya, di ba, yung volatility. Kaya nga yung iba nagbabans, eh. bumibili ng treasury bonds, treasury bills, kasi fixed income nga yun, sabi ni Ed, Ed M. Pero yung sa inyo din, merong, merong price na gumagalaw, pero may dividend pa, parang pinagsama. Tama ba? Yes. Yes. No, oo, oh, tama. Oh, babalikan ko lang si Ed. Ed, balikan kita ha. Kanina may may nag-message sa akin na nanonood. San daw ba mala- makikita yung presyo ng treasury bills, treasury bonds? Uh, paano ba 'to binibili? Sabi mo kanina pumunta doon sa napakaraming GSEDS, 'di ba? Yung mga government securities eligible <laughs> eligible <laughs> dealers. Oh, yes, parang mouthful, mouthful. Oh. <laughs> Pero paki ano paki breakdown ulit into very simple data. Paano ba makaka-invest doon yung ating mga kababayan? Okay. So, I guess okay, a few things. So, for government securities in general, hindi po ito kagaya again ng stocks na centralized, may centralized stock exchange na doon po naka-post yung ano, yung buying or selling rates or selling uh, prices na pwedeng i-hit gusto mo bumili, gusto mong ibenta. So, uh, yun pong pinagkaiba. Ito pong government securities ay pinatawag nating bilateral exchanges. So, tumawag ka sa banko o yung mga banko mismo magkatawag na sa isa't isa at uh, they will agree on a price or a yield na kung magkano nila bibili o ibibenta. So, definitely, no, in terms of, ano, in terms of uh, price visibility, it will, ano, no, we need to manage your expectations Ay, hindi siya gaya ng ano ng stocks but there is i think a website no there's a ano there's a company called the PTS group you know, Philippine Dealing System group and they have the website and let me just uh, see uh, pds.com.ph that uh, you can actually you know that they try to monitor itong mga done deals for government security specific uh, government security so may kita po natin doon sa ano website nila kung magkano na trade, magkano yung volume, kailan na, na trade. So, pinopost naman. And, of course, that's for, ano, no, for us mga, ano, for us uh, humble investors, if you are part of a, a larger financial institution, meron po tayong mga specialized service provider, kagaya ni Bloomberg, uh, uh, dating pangalang uh, Reuters, icon na ang pangalan nyo ngayon, that uh, actually, ano, uh, gathers the necessary information for everyone who will, ano, who wants to have an idea kung magkano na ba ang pressure ng mga GS. So yun po. Now, the second part of the question, saan? Uh, in general, pag meron po kayong bank account doon sa isa, doon lang sa nakita niyong mahabang listahan ng ano, government securities eligible dealers, yun lang po ang ano, ang kailangan nyo lang pong gawin is tumhawag doon sa branch manager ni, ano, ni banko and then ask kung magkano po yung ano, uh, ano po yung in-offer ng GS. Now, Depende sa inyong relationship sa ano sa bank manager. Sometimes ayaw nila mawala ng deposito, di ba? Kasi yun po ang nangyayari. Pag bumili kayo ng, ano, ng GS, mawawalan sila ng deposito. Kaya minsan tinatago nila. Pero kulitin uh, <laughs> nyo lang po sila at uh, ibibigay naman nila yan. So yung listahan. So yun po pag secondary market. Ngayon, uh, as I said, meron pong ano, mga new issuance, regular issuance. Itong ano, ang, 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 ang BTR in the form of yun nga. RTBs or premium bonds. So, pag uh, uh, new issuance, I guess the you know, the the closest analog here for stocks is yung IPO. So, meron din po kami IP kung baga IPO for ano new retail treasury bonds. Na yun po uh, may mga specific selling agents, but usually mga government banks are so definitely part of that ano selling agent. Na uh, during the ano the the short the relatively ano short offer period of about two weeks pwede po sila mag-order doon. So, pwede silang tumawag, pwede silang pumunta, pwede rin po silang mag-order din sa mga online platforms na bang gusto. No? Kung may lang mga account siya, yung mobile banking app ni Landbank will, ano, will have that functionality. So, yun po. In short, I guess, the, ano, ano man yung specifics, tawag po sa banko eh, kung gusto po natin pumili ng GS. 
<laughs> Natawa ko, very honest si sir. O, di ba? Huwag daw, ano, kasi naman, sir, huwag daw, daw aagawan ng mga banko yung retail investors. <laughs> Nauna pa silang pumuha ng pang 5,000 pesos lang, di ba? Uh, kailangan naman daw hatian ang ating mga kababayan. Pero very quickly also, ano nga ba yung pagkakaiba ng treasury bills, tsaka treasury bonds, tsaka magkano ba dapat yung minimum investment na pwede doon? Right. So, of course, all of these are government securities. Ang pinagkaiba ang bills ay short term. So, 91 sa mag ko po, 91 day, 182, at 364 days. So, kung gusto nyo po ng ano, gusto nyo matandaan, 3 months, 6 months, at uh, 1 year. Bakit uh, na ba hindi na lang ganun, Ed? <laughs> Pinahirapan yeah. nyo pa kami. <laughs> uh, so, yun po. So, the, 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 and the, uh, and of course, in treasury bonds is anything in general, ano, beyond one year. And the other difference is that si bills, ay nabanggit ko po, discount yung method of uh, investor compensation. So, wala pong regular na dividendo or interest payments quarterly or semi-annually. Uh, kumbaga kinakaltas nina kinakaltas ng investor pag nagpapakutang sila sa gobyerno so yung, yung, yung example po po kanina 1 million pesos kami mag issue ng treasury bills pero matatanggap lang po ng gobyerno ay 950,000 pesos so yung pag binayaran po namin si investor sa so let's say ng nine, at the end of the three, third month yung ano 3 months at mature na ng full 1 million pesos so yung difference po nun, 950 at yung ano 1 million, yun po yung gain. So yun po ang tinatawag na discount. And that's the way si, ano, si Treasury bills ay nababayaran si investor. So yun po, maturity, mahaba si bonds, shorter si, ano, si bills, at yung uh, coupon si bonds, whereas discount si bills. And the banks also, iba-iba din yung minimum, no? Yes, Depende yes. sa banko. And yes. singit ko lang, this is taxable. Ha? Yung return ninyo, my 20% final tax. Tama po ba? Right. So the, uh, the government securities in general, uh, hindi, yung a tax exemption is on the institution or the investor ano, status. So uh, kung si investor na bumili, ay individual na bumili, ay hindi tax exempt. So makakatagasan po ng 20% withholding tax. Pero kung ang bumili po ng government security, whether it is treasury bills or treasury bonds or RTBs, ay let's say, cooperative no uh, basically any tax exempt uh, institution dito sa bansa wala pong taxes wala pong withholding taxes so yun po no the eg exemption is really on the individual or investor not on the instrument ay mga nakikinig sa akin na 744 million paki presuan naman diyan kung gusto niyo maglambing sa gobyerno na babaan ang 20% final tax napakalaki kasi eh bawasan naman sana wait putahan ko si JC kasi marami pang iniisip si JC para ma-maximize naman natin yung oras natin sa kanya JC kanina sabi mo marami advantages in mutual funds meron din bang disadvantage yon para sa ating mga mamamayan mama at investors. Yes. Uh, ako bilang trader, yung primary disadvantage mo sa mutual funds, di ba? Okay, okay. Busy yung tao. Sila na bahala mag-invest para sa'yo. Pero mayroon silang certain limitations and guidelines sa, sa fund management principles nila na karamihan ng mutual funds, hindi sila pwede mag cash ng napakataas sa, sa portfolio nila. So, ibig sabihin, parate, all the time, dapat may minementing kang exposure. So, I think, ano ba, 70, 80, or 9, 80, 70, 80% dapat invested ka. So, what what is the effect of that? The, the effect of that is kahit gaano katalino yung team mo, yung fund managers mo, na six months ago, obvious naman na recession, ma, lalabas itong mga inflation, na-identify mo na kahit top level CFA fund managers tong mga to yung data team mo sobrang solid kahit na-identify nila yun 20% lang yung makakash out nila so that means bulk nung fund ma-expose ka pa rin sa market downturns kaya yung correlation ng, ng, ng equity funds or kung ano mang fund na global fund very correlated pa rin do sa primary market or primary asset na tinitrade so which hindi natin kontrolado yon bilang investor kaya yung guideline ko kanina ang kontrolin mo na lang is yung sarili mong pace na kung alam mong may ganitong market downturn uh, ikaw yung magdahan-dahan sa sizing mo o mm -hmm. and sa budget mo tapos kapag nag-reversal na yung mga metrics mga fund economic conditions saka ka mas mag ano 
mga kada may positive sign doon ka mag-increase slowly. Ganun. Yung yung dating ano 1 million a month ni Ed gagawin niya na lang 50,000 ganun. <laughs> Ed, wag mo na to papasa kayo Oli. Curious ako. Yung outlook mo sa business, outlook mo sa ekonomiya and bigyan mo kami ng tip kung sa tingin mo ba katulad ni JC, dahan-dahan na muna sa pag invest na yon or meron pa rin paraan para makakita ng opportunities. At nasan yun? Napahirapan tayo ngayon. <laughs> yan. Mo, uh, Pero, yan. Sige, seryoso muna tayo kahit sandali. <laughs> De, um, alam mo, Salve, ngayon kasi alam naman natin, na ano, no, kakatapos lang natin sa pandemic, tapos mukhang may mga recession na sa ibang bansa at sa US mukhang marami na lang nang ganoon nag-speculate mukhang magkakaroon ng recession so meron ka rin nararamdaman na merong slowdown din sa mga demand sa ibang sector ng ating ano no sa Philippines sa Philippines no pero like kami naman sa Libawa sa City Core sa Megawide so we always try to find sectors where we think it's more resilient to pandemic halimbawa ngayon ang nag-focus kami sa sa ano sa power kasi eh tingnan mo naman ang problema natin sa power ngayon di ba sa buong mundo lahat may push sa lahat sa gobyerno sa iba-ibang bansa na itigil na yung mga fossil fuel so ang ginag nangyayari yung mga presyo ng mga coal nagsitaasan lumalabas ka mas mahal pa ang presyo ng power na nanggagaling sa coal parang nagbago na yung mundo eh so can you imagine 80%, 70 to 80% ng ating power nang gagaling sa mga fossil fuel, no? So ibig sabihin, may power crisis tayo. Tumataas ang presyo ng back ng mga kuryente. Pero sa kabilang banda, tayo naman mga negosyante, um, opportunity 'yan. Kasi ibig sabihin, may may ano, may may may, may negosyo tayong pwedeng gawin. Kaya si Oli nga dito, busy busy yan kasi eh, kung titingnan mo 10,000 na na megawatt na pwede mo dapat palitan siya from a traditional or dirty power kung tawagin natin no gawin mo siyang renewable na gaano kalaki ang 10,000 megawatt para lang ma, malaman ng taong bayan no kung gaano kalaki yan siguro ang halaga ng 10,000 megawatt oli pag nag-change nag-kpex ka diyan pinalitan mo yan ginagumastos ka easily mahigit 100 trillion pesos. Wow. Ibig sabihin, ibig sabihin kahit 10 taon hindi mo kaya palitan. Kung ibabase mo lang sa sa Pilip, sa capacity ng ano ah, ng Pilipinas ah, ng mga negosyo dito ng private and public sectors, we cannot kung ibabase mo lang yan not unless may may intervention from the government. So ganun kalaki ang ang problema, pag ganun din kalaki ang opportunity. So ang masasabi ko lang like kami nag-focus kami sa sa mga sector na may opportunity, sa power, isa na yan. So sa construction, may mga ibang sector, segment, tinamaan. Halimbawa, yung mga office office and commercial businesses, tinamaan eh. Nung pandemic, humina. Wala yung nagsara yung mga mall. Yung offices, humina. Pero uh, meron naman malakas. Halimbawa, yung infrastructure, yung gobyerno, nag, ano sila, nag-push sila ng more spending sa infrastructure infrastructure. So doon naman kami nag-focus sa sa ano sa sa construction. So ito yung mga bagay-bagay na alam mo naman sa 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 crisis, meron talagang opportunity. So kaya kami parati namin sinasabi, we have to ano lang keep on uh, ano lang uh, be agile and ano lang tayo, yung flexible tayo para um uh, ma-adapt tayo sa sitwasyon kasi nagbabago eh lalo na tong pandemic. So, yun lang masasabi ko. So, in all crises there is always opportunity. Alam alam para lang para lang konteksto sa mga nakikinig. Limang dekada na ako nagko-cover ng business eh. Ito si Eddie natatakot. <laughs> Nagsimula negosyo to 1997 financial crisis. So, ang ibig sabihin ba niyan, Ed, hindi ka pa rin titigil. Tuloy, mag-i-invest ka pa, maglalagay ka ng... May nagtanong eh, si Pardeep Jin. 
Tama ba yun? Ako, Gene Dump. Actually, And he ako plans nga. for asset infusion sa CRIT in the near term. Oh, serious na yan. Nako. Uh, marami kaming plano, pati hindi ba lang namin pwede ma-disclose, pero... <laughs> Maka mapalo ka ng EPSE. Yan, gaya, maka magalit. <laughs> uh, ay, um, pero ako talaga, ano, uh, Salve, no, kahit nagsimula ako sa sa aking buhay, no, nung nag-graduate ako, nagsimula ng negosyo, crisis na, Asian financial crisis. So ako naman, di ako natatakot kasi ang marami ring opportunity. Eh. Doon nagkakataon na na minsan doon yung mga negosyo may nawawala, meron din magong negosyo na nabubuo. Ganyan siya. So, it, it, kung depende mo siya, paano mo siya titignan. Pero ikaw yung kung negosyante, mahilig ka sa magnegosyo, ako na-excite ako eh kasi may mga bagong opportunity lumalabas. Meron ditong tanong para sa'yo lang talaga. Pero pwede rin siguro kay Oli, tsaka kay JC, tsaka kay Ed. Serious na tanong to. Ha? Okay. Abang, abangan niyo yung tanong. Ito, sabi ni Dayang, Meron bang asan na ba yun? Meron bang investment sa love na forever ang ROI? <laughs> Serious yan ha? O, yes no. Ako, sasagutin ko yan. <laughs> May ano? ko sa love. Ayun <laughs> ah, <yun> lang. <laughs> ano alam mo, alam mo de- depende yan sa palad ng tao. Ang ang love minsan nagbabago. Depende yan sa dynamics. Alam mo, pag anything pertains to human being, pwede magbago. Ayon. Pero nasa inyo, nas, nasa Diyos ang awa, nasa tao ang gawa. Tao ang gawa. So, depende yan sa dalawang partida o depende yan sa community, depende yan sa ano paano mo minamanage. Tingnan mo, mas Tama mahaba pa yung sagot mo. Baka mas magaling ka sa love eh. <laughs> Only Tama short naman. answer. Yes, no. Yeah. Love for, forever ROI. Well, uh, let me just qualify now. Yung love in investing, that should be forever. Okay, Ayan. dapat you need to develop the habit of keep on investing. Pero, doon sa instrument that you are investing, dapat walang forever yan. Kasi you need to know when you need to buy and when you need to sell. Okay, so in terms of love in investing, yes, dapat forever. Doon sa instrument <laughs> that you will invest, walang forever dapat yan. Don't fall in love with your investment. Diyan ang number one pagkakamali na nang nag-i-invest. Kahit alam ng palugi na yun, kailangan ng mag-sell, eh forever pa rin. <laughs> Ako, feeling ko si JC nagising sa tanong na to. Parang pareho siguro kay ni Oli, no? Don't fall in love. Lagi ko naririnigyan sa mga trader, eh. JC, ikaw, quick answer. Uh, tama, mayroong pang long term. I think, sa, ano, <laughs> sa investments. <laughs> Dapat na yung pang long term, pang short term. Sa good time. Sa good time. Oh, sa, sa love po, ano, maganda na yung sagot nila. Wala po ako masyado. <laughs> Safe answer. Uy, Ed, Ed, pwede ka bang sumagot nito? Uh, well, wala kasing forever. And uh, alam mo naman, lalo sa investment, mahirap umaasa. No? Umaasa ang pagsak na lahat. Eh, kung ang ano na natin, ipatatakboy eh, natin sa pag-asa, eh, baka... Uh, lugi tayo. So, yun po. <laughs> so, nothing is forever. <laughs> wala kong forever. Tingnan mo lahat kayo nagising. Oh, final round of questions, Ed. Em, babalik ako sa'yo. Ilang percent daw ba ng government securities ang napupunta sa ordinaryong investor sa retail? Right. So, that's uh, actually ang mahirap pong ano, na ma-isagot yung with the, the precision of Okay, yung individual mismo, no? But the, I guess right now, uh, the, uh, if I know down, what we have, the data, our data shows na about 25, or I think 30%, about 20% are already, you know, uh, of our government, outstanding government securities. I retail, uh, ano, product na siya, retail, treasury bond or retail dollar bond. So, yun po, that demonstrates yung aming commitment to, ano, to further uh, uh, expand yung, ano, yung reach namin and of course yung participation of the uh, individual retail ano, investor, Filipino investors. Ano yung ideal? And what is the program ngayon ng Bureau of the Treasury para mas marami Pilipino ang mas komportable na mag-invest sa government securities? Right. I think it's hard to say what's the right number. All we know is that we want it to increase more. 
So that basically ang prinsipyo dito is yung ano ang uh, in, ang, ang, ang Pilipino ay dapat ano should be funding its own ano its own uh, his own his or her own government. So that's our ano of course one uh, uh, political economy principle here. But uh, wala naman kung specific number. Just we just want to see it increase more. And in terms of the specific activities is. Are of course yung ano more intensive pin financial literacy sessions and ito pinapatuloy namin yung mga ganitong programa for ano for uh, uh, investor education introduction to government securities and we have been trying to leverage yung ano po uh, uh, online uh, platforms na banggit ko po kayo sa presentation ko pero po tayong lahat banggit po web bank mobile applications para sa investments we have to tie up with bonds.ph for new ano, RTB issuances and of course yung ordering platforms po namin no, for, for retail investment bonds. So we want to, and I think the, the, the goal here there is to uh, see how much more we can expand. But those are our thrusts. Digitization to make uh, things more accessible, convenient to our retail investors and more uh, in uh, investor education and exposure. Oo nga, eh, nung bata pa ako, walang mga app-app na yan, walang digital na yan. Kaming dalawa ni EDS, eh, fax ang alam namin, tsaka acetate. Hindi alam na ni JC yun. JC, di ko alam kung alam mo yung acetate, eh. Pero, Ay, JC, meron... Ano? <laughs> naranasan mo ba? Na, wow, na to. <laughs> so, baby face lang pala to si JC. JC, meron na akong pinaghandaan na question para sa sa'yo. And this is the final round because I have to end by 3 p.m. And I have around eight minutes for the last two people who will answer. Masyadong parang scorched earth yung scenario sa mundo ngayon. May war, may mga gutom na tao kasi hindi nakakarating yung ibang products. Minsan yung mga negosyante, merong raw materials, walang botelya. Paano paparating sa mall yung produkto nila? As an investor, uh, would you prefer that people remain bearish for the next 12 months? Saan magahanap ng hope? Ano yung overall strategy? What do you want them to take away as we end today's session? <laughs> Ang Miss Universe ba ito? Pang, pang matalinong Miss Universe. Sige. Uh, yung ano, kasi yung context ng challenges na nafe-face natin today, parang yung build-up niyan is all the complacencies and the holes na nabuo since nung ano nung simula nung crisis na 28 to 2008 as to 2009 nagprint sila ng print ng pera tapos parang kumbaga 10 years tayo of good times or complacency ngayon yung ripple yung recoil effect niya so yung 10 years na sobrang bullish ng markets tas up to the point na may lumabas na new asset crypto tas sobrang euphoric di ba Yan yung mga extreme signs na after five years, babalikan na lang natin sa history book na o nga, no, yung mga tao na baliw sa NFTs. Kahit ako, na-interest ako sa mga ganyan dati, NFTs, crypto. Yun yung mga 20 years after pag binasa natin sa history book, putik yun pala yung nagmarka nung extreme na ano na, na complacency. When which, ang, ang, ayoko naman maging parang bad news bringer. Pero ano naman, it's all over the place, di ba? na nararanasan na natin yung mga inflation, mga war, mga trade supply issues. Hindi siya on the snap ma ano eh, masusolve. For for me ka, kahit yung USA medyo ipit siya kasi kung babaan niya yung interest rates, yung inflation mahirapan pa rin siyang isolve. Pero kung tumuloy yung inflation, mapipilitan siyang taasan yung rates. Pag tinaas nang tinaas yung rates, mahirapan na siya magprint ng pera. Yung mga solutions na in-employ niya for the last 5-10 years, hindi na gagana basta-basta. So may payback period. Ito na yung payback period. So in terms of strategy, hindi natin alam hanggang saan yung bottom ng market. Mukha siyang mababa ngayon, down 20%. Pero on historical crashes na parang 10 years in the making, hindi natin pwede ma mamaliitin yung, ano, yung severity nito kung gaano ka potentially mag-worsen. And ngayon, ano pa lang eh, starting phase ng bear market layoffs, inflation. So yung general, ano ko, to summarize, general idea, 6 months, 12 months, or it can be 1 to 3 years. Ito yung time maging conservative ka na build up ka muna. Okay yung ginagawa nila, Sir Ed, na may negosyo ka. Controlled mo yan eh. Kung may solar panel ka, may controlled demand. Controlled mo yung negosyo, di ba? Wala ka masyadong external factors dyan. 
So yung mga ganung aspeto na kung may mga investment opportunities tayo, doon ka muna sa mga controlled na hindi ka apektado ng market volatility. Tapos yung budget mo sa investment, kung maglalagay ka 10,000 a month, kontrolin mo muna. Uh, up, up to the point na makikita naman natin, eh, malay natin in the next, actually tonight may CPI report, may core inflation report yung US. Eh kung nakag, nagulat tayo na biglang nag 6% yan coming from 8, ayun, may, 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 may relief yung market from there. But it still doesn't mean na one report will so suddenly make the whole prob- fundamental problem disappear. Diba? Kasi 10 year, 5 year in the making tong mga to. So that's something we have to put in mind. Na kung mag bigla ang markets, hindi ibig sabihin party na kagad. Yung mga short-term opportunities lang. Pero yung fundamental na 10-year cycle, baka mas malalim pa yung dapat nating expect. So paghandaan lang natin. Thanks, JC. What the sense I'm getting from you is, let's move forward with both our eyes wide open. Make sure you know saan ka magsistep. Doesn't oh. mean wala nang opportunity, pero we have to be more careful. And dadagdagan ko to as I move to our, our last two panelists. I look to the two of you for some inspiration for our viewers today. Nung 100 years ago, nung ako ay pinanganak, <laughs> pag tinitingnan mo after, after, every indust, after every industrial revolution, like one, two, three, four, there's um, an alignment of wealth. And those who are favored, yung nagkakaroon ng chance para yumaman, magkaroon ng mas mabuting buhay, nandun sa posisyon na makakapag-inspire ng iba, yun yung mga tao na nag-iisip. Pinimake sure nila na yung pera nila ay nasa tamang lugar. Hindi nag invest sa mga scams. Isa pala to, isa mga reason kaya tayo nandito. Dahil pinapakita natin, ito difficult pero these are legitimate investment. Pag nandun kayo sa scam, Wala nang usapan, talagang wala na kayong pera, di ba? Pero Ed and Oli, you have started, this company has started small, mga estudyante pa lang kayo nun nung nagsimula. And now it's it's big, it's well-known, it's very successful. How can our viewers today who are retail investors, maybe small businessmen, some are students, how can they be part of the favor, yung mga magsusurvive ng fourth industrial revolution. O, ano, paano yun? Paano sila magiging katulad ninyong dalawa? Oli, pwede ikaw muna? Tapos si Ed yung pinakaseryoso sa lahat. Ayan ang ihuli natin. Yeah. Um, I think um, importante that you develop the following values. No? Uh, you need to have perseverance. Okay? Um, you cannot perfectly time the market. As in anything, you can only plan so well, plan enough, mag-aral ka, pag aralan mo, but then there are things that are beyond your control. Eh. So you just focus on what is within your control, beyond your control, market forces, mahirap yan eh. So once you have that, you need perseverance. Kasi uh, tulad na nabanggit mo, there's no such thing at, as get rich quick uh, scheme, no? like yung mga scam. So you have to persevere. Second value is you need to be agile. Okay. Kung alam mong, oops, teka, mukhang yung, yung ginawa mo is mali, you need to have that agility to, to make that changes. Kaya nga walang forever. Eh. Kung alam mong mali, mali, okay, you cut loss, you move to another, ano. Uh, so those two values are very important. Persevere and the agility. Go ahead, Ed. Yeah, tama naman yung sinasabi ni Oli. Kasi, um, lahat naman, even ito yung mga kung ano man narating namin ngayon, hindi naman to overnight. So, ang parati ko sinasabi, alam mo, okay lang naman magkamali. Kung may perseverance ka, tuloy-tuloy ka yung hard work mo. Kung, kung baga sa Tagalog, kung may tsaga, may nilaga. Kasi kung yung magkamali ka, but yung perseverance mo is there, yung consistency, uh, tuloy-tuloy mo lang gagawin yan, imposible naman siguro baka tatlong limang beses pa ulit-ulit mo yung pagkakamali mo. Diba? <laughs> so, ibig sabihin, 25 years na rin kami nagdenegosyo. Uh, sa tagal namin nagdenegosyo, marami na rin kami nadaan ng pagkakamali. Hindi naman din tayo perfecto, di ba? Pero yung mga pagkakamali na yan, you will learn it ano eh, as you do the business. So, magagaling ka rin sa ginagawa mo. Parang ikaw rin yan, salve, di ba? Ngayon, tignan mo, sikat ka na, di ba? 
Ganyan din yan. Kailangan lang talaga, ano? Kailangan lang uh, tsagain mo lang. Siya lang tsagain. Eh, wag ka lang masyadong atat na gusto mo na ma-reap yung, ano mo, yung success mo. Thank you very much. I think, grabe yung mga takeaways ko today. We have the best speakers, the best panelists. This, this financial education event just brought, made me a lot richer in what I know. Um, nakita ko si Ed M talked about risks, returns that you can get. Si JC, knowledge and information talaga. Kailangan na intindihan mo yung hinaharap natin so that you know how to move forward. And the two of you showed perseverance, agility, and this very important nugget of information. No success happens overnight. And it's the same with the economy moving forward. As JC said, hindi ito masusolve agad-agad. Pero with more financial education, financial empowerment, tuloy-tuloy lang tayo dahil what goes up goes down at wala daw talagang forever. So yung doubt, aakit din yan eventually. Thank you very much to my panelists. Napaka-grateful ko na ako ang napili for today. Maraming salamat and thank you to the Securities and Exchange Commission for this very important event. Thank you and I'll turn you over now to Attorney Badet for the closing. Maraming salamat, Ms. Salve, and of course, our resource speakers for the very fun and interesting discussion. I'm sure our viewers have learned a lot from you, at kahit ako po ay maraming natutunan. It's really important to know when and where to invest, dahil yun nga, kung nakapag-invest tayo sa maling bagay o tao, sa tamang tao pa kaya or bagay, di ba? And ngayon naman ay mag-shoutout po tayo sa ating mga viewers from sa ating mga viewers sa ating Facebook live from Surigao City Green Meadows Christian Technological Institute Incorporated Mandawi City Cebu Colegio de Santo Cristo de Burgos and shout out din po sa ating viewers from IMG Japan Ngayon ay may idea na tayo tungkol sa iba't ibang investment products na maaaring pagpilian upang simula ng ating investment journey we hope that you will share your learnings with your friends and family as you all move towards a comfortable and secure life. Sa mga susunod na araw, maglalabas ang SEC ng videos tungkol sa tamang pag-invest at ang posibleng kahihinatan sakaling maling tao o grupo ang magbigay or maibigay ninyo ito sa maling tao ang inyong pera. At hindi lang yan, marami pang programang inihanda ang SEC para sa inyo. Sa darating na Nobyembe ay pag-iigtingin pa natin ang ating mga programa bilang pagdiriwang ng Investor Protection Week. Tumutok lamang sa aming Facebook page at website para sa updates. The SEC is dedicated to providing you with quality and insightful webinars. To help us improve, please provide your feedback by accomplishing our evaluation form. Please accomplish the evaluation form as part of the verification process for the issuance of your e-certificates. Muli para sa makakatanggap ng e-certificate, pakisagutan lamang po ang online evaluation form na nasa inyong screen. Nandiyan po ang link, makikita nyo rin ito sa caption sa aming live video. Simula pa lang yan ng ating webinar series on when and where to invest. Magkikita-kita po ulit tayo bukas para sa ikalawang bahagi ng ating webinar kung saan tatalakay naman natin ang iba pang uri ng investment na mayroon sa merkado. Muli makakasama natin dyan ang Bangko Sentral ng Pilipinas para talakayin kung paano tayo makakapagtabi ng mas malaking halaga para sa ating retirement sa pamamagitan ng personal equity and retirement accounts o pera. Sasamahan din tayo ng pag-ibig fund Para naman mabigyan tayo ng pagbuno ng mas malaking savings sa pamamagitan ng kanilang MP2 savings. I don't know about you but I'm very I'm feeling very excited for tomorrow's webinar dahil may pag-ibig na, may pera pa. Sana all. Pero ngayon pa lang ay makikita na natin kung gaano karami ang uri ng investments na pwedeng paglagyan ng ating pinaghirapang pera. Naway magsilbing gabay ang webinar na ito nang sa gayon ay wala nang mabiktima ng mga pangako na madaling kita na sa huli ay napapako lang din naman. Muli ako po si Attorney Badet at maraming salamat po sa pagsama sa amin ngayong araw.